Next, we'll talk about lakes. Lakes are bigger than ponds. And while lakes and ponds have much in common, lakes are larger, they're deeper, and this greater size and depth makes for some differences in dissolved oxygen levels, plant growth, and temperature. In a lake, the amount of oxygen dissolved in the water stays pretty even over a 24-hour period. While a strong wind can ruffle up a pond surface, on a lake, it can whip up huge waves. This mixes air into the water, helping increase dissolved oxygen levels. Now, only in shallow areas, such as around the shoreline or, or islands, will there be enough sunlight reaching the bottom to allow plants to grow. These shallow areas are called the littoral zone. In at least some places, the water in a lake is too deep for plants to grow on the bottom. Lakes often include a transition zone containing a narrow band of wetlands extending out from the shore. The ecology of this shallow shoreline zone is a lot like pond ecology. Toward the middle of the lake, away from shore, is the open water zone called the limnetic zone. This part of the lake is too deep for sunlight to reach the bottom, so no plants grow on the bottom here. Despite not reaching bottom, sunlight still shines into the water in this zone to some depth. The part of the limnetic zone that gets sunlight is called the photic zone. Some species of large and open water fish spend much of their time in this photic zone. They may swim into the littoral zone now and then to feed or spawn, but these visits are only temporary. There's also a deep water zone located just below the photic zone. That's called the aphotic zone. Here, there is too little sunlight or oxygen reaching this zone for plants or even algae to grow. Dead organic matter sinks to the lake bottom where bacteria and other decomposers, such as some worms and larval stages of some insects, break it down. This area is called the benthic zone. The overall temperature in a lake is fairly even from day to day, while surface temperatures can vary. Lake water in Texas is warmest at the surface and gets colder the deeper you go in a lake until you reach the bottom, where it's possible for water to become as cold as four degrees centigrade. Now that's the temperature where water is most dense, thus the heaviest.